Hi, this is Arda Beşkardeş, immigration attorney. Today we're in the middle of Wall Street. And I'll talk to you about the key players of the U.S. immigration system. We're in a very vibrant area. On my back, you see what's called the Federal Hall. Most people don't realize, but New York City was actually the capital of the United States for a very brief period. And this was actually built as the Congress before it was moved to the District of Columbia. The United States at that time decided that it will be unfair for one state to have the capital. They thought that there may be a bias against that state or for that state if that state was the capital. So the District of Columbia was created, which is not a state. Therefore, it says we have taxation without representation which is actually a good segue to talk about the key players. Who are the key players of U.S. immigration? Who are the key players? Tell us. First of all, the United States Constitution leaves immigration at the sole jurisdiction or exclusive jurisdiction of the Congress. So immigration is a federal matter. No matter how hard they try and they want to try, the states have no say in immigration. The U.S. Congress is, and the federal government is, responsible for immigration. How much does the Constitution talk about immigration? Only a couple of words. It says immigration and nationality is going to be within the responsibility of the federal government and the Congress. How much does the Congress know about immigration? They know a lot but not enough for its day-to-day -day basis. So what the Congress does is they enact something called a law. Right now we have the Immigration and Nationality Act. The Immigration and Nationality Act gives the key principles of the U.S. immigration system. They say, let there be H visas, let there be green cards, let there be this, let there be that. But the Congress is not equipped to decide or tell or outline how those visas are going to be given, how those green cards are going to be given, how is that procedure it's going to be. So they delegate it to the executive branches. In this case, Department of Homeland Security, Department of State, Department of Labor. Those executive branches, those agencies, they tell how the H-1B visas are going to work, how the green cards are going to work in their own jurisdiction. And based on that, they create the regulations. So, on the top, we have the Constitution. It's the supreme law of the land. Why is it the supreme law of the land? Because it says so. The Constitution itself says, I am the supreme law of the land. Nothing can conflict with the Constitution. If it conflicts, then in that case, the Constitution always wins. Then after that, we got the Immigration and Nationality Act an act of the Congress that gives the brief outline of the U.S. immigration system. After that, we got the regulations. The regulations go to the nitty-gritty parts of immigration. It tells you how things actually work, how the system actually works. Then we got agency memos, we got cases, we got lots of immigration court decisions, federal court decisions, whatever. That's the legal system of the U.S. immigration. And based on that, here are the agencies. Congress obviously makes the laws, but that's where their responsibility stops. On top of that, we have the Department of Homeland Security. Department of Homeland Security is responsible for all immigration matters within the borders of the United States, and sometimes in limited instances outside of the United States. Department of Homeland Security has three specific branches for immigration. The USCIS, USCIS stands for United States Citizenship and Immigration Service. That's the service, that's the benefits for parts of immigration. You want a visa, you want an immigration classification, you want a green card, you usually deal with USCIS. Then you got the CBP, Customs and Border Protection. Those are the people that are responsible for airports, customs. Those are the people that you see at the airports with the guns and the badges. Those are the ones that admit you, and they have their special jurisdiction. 
Then you got ICE or ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Those are the people who do the raids, they arrest you, they try you if necessary if you're in front of an immigration judge. Then you got the immigration court system, which is if you're in deportation or removal proceedings. That's the Homeland Security and the immigration system. On the other hand, you got the Department of State. Department of State is responsible for the American consulates. If you're outside of the United States, if you want a visa, anything related to visas, and we'll talk about the distinctions between visas and statuses in a different video, then you will be dealing with the United States Department of State. Then we got the U.S. Department of Labor. The U.S. Department of Labor is responsible for foreign workers coming and working in the United States. They do the labor certifications, they do the perm applications, they de declare what the prevailing wages for certain positions are. So these are the main key players. The Department of Homeland Security under the USCIS, CBP and ICE, Department of State and Department of Labor. And we'll talk more about their roles in every single classification when the time arises. Thank you very much for listening to me.